Porsche Cayenne review at a glance the latest Porsche Cayenne isn't wildly different from its predecessor, but that's what Porsche customers have come to expect. Despite this there's some cutting-edge new tech for this third-generation model underneath that's helped Porsche concentrate on improving it in key areas. Starting inside, the new cabin treatment is more attractive and up-to-date, and occupants should notice significant improvements to refinement too. A lighter chassis and suspension upgrades have helped boost the already impressive dynamics, and as you would expect there are efficiency improvements too. That said, diesel and hybrid versions are notably absent from the launch lineup which will be a disappointment to some, and KN owners pay a hefty price for the privilege of buying and running this prestigious and premium SUV. Our choice Porsche Cayenne The Porsche Cayenne is around today in sufficient numbers to make it an unremarkable sight on the road, but when it launched all the way back in 2000 to its unique combination of Porsche standard performance and handling with SUV practicality made it a real talking point for car enthusiasts. Look up old reviews from the early noughties, and it's evident that reviewers found the extreme turbo version especially mind-bending. Best 4x4s and SUVs on sale Some sports car purists hated even the idea that Porsche could build an SUV, but the rest of the world got on with loving it. The result? Porsche had an instant bestseller on its hands, making profits the company has been able to reinvest in its sports car lineup. The KN Turbo also provided a wake-up call for many other brands in the luxury off-roader segment. The Range Rover Sport arrived swiftly in 2004, and extreme performance rivals for the KN Turbo now include the BMW X5M, Mercedes-AMG Gli 63, Maserati Levante S, Bentley Bentayga and forthcoming Lamborghini Urus, the latter both sharing the latest MLB Evo engineering platform with the KN, and of course the Audi Q7, all being VW Group stablemates. Less extreme versions of the KN must compete with an even broader spectrum of premium off-roaders, including the Volkswagen Tyrag and Volvo XC90. This latest version of the big Porsche 4x4 was introduced in late 2017 and is the third generation in the KN series. While the previous generation KN featured diesel and plug-in hybrid versions, the launch engine lineup for the Mkiwi consists only of the 542bhp turbo V8, and a pair of turbocharged V6 engines for the standard model, and the KNS features of the new model include 4D chassis control, inherited from the firm's Panamera, with a variety of drive modes, active four-wheel drive and an eight-speed automatic transmission that's standard across the range. It also comes with improved air suspension, while a new multi-link suspension setup, torque vectoring, and optional active anti-roll bars set the scene for formidable performance on the road. Engines, performance and drive astonishing turbo acceleration is backed by unexpectedly involving handling, even by Porsche standards we'll get to the crazy acceleration numbers for turbo models further down this review, but first there's a new chassis control system called 4D that monitors an array of sensors, feeding back to an active air suspension system to provide optimum responses over a wide range of terrains and on the road. Improving off-road performance was one of the key objectives for the platform, and with different settings for gravel, mud, sand and rock the KN offers a similar degree of ability to its Bentley Bentayga sister model. There are five drive modes for when you're on the tarmac, let's face it, where the car will spend most of its time, and especially with options ticked for rear-wheel steering and active anti-roll bars, on the road, is where KN really shines. Even without these expensive add-ons the Porsche sets a new benchmark in right and handling for the class. Body roll is all but eliminated in corners, the steering offers the responsiveness, accuracy and weight of a serious sporting saloon, and the brakes offer plenty of well-modulated stopping power. Ease off on the performance though, and the KN's clever suspension softens up too, bringing a real improvement to ride quality and refinement for passengers, whether on motorway or a road cruises, or around town. Engines The headline grabber in the range is obviously the KN Turbo, and the new version offers performance that's even more impressive than the last. 
Its engine is a twin turbo V8 that delivers 542 bhp and 770 nm of torque, a small but significant advance over the previous turbo model's 4.8 liter V8. Specify the optional sport chrono package with launch control, and the latest KN turbo has the potential to catapult you to 62 miles per hour from standstill in 3.9 seconds thanks in no small part to the amazing traction of the active 4x4 powertrain. Top speed is 177 miles per hour, which is thoroughly impressive too. Set against its high-performance stablemate, the standard KN's 335bhp 3.0 turbocharged V6 engine looks weedy, until you remember Sport Chrono-equipped versions will crack the 0 to 62 miles per hour sprint in 5.9 seconds and top 152 miles per hour. The 434bhp KNS knocks her second off the 0 to 62 miles per hour time and touches 164 miles per hour MPG, CO2 and running costs look elsewhere. If you're motivated by environmental concerns or value for money the list price of Porsche KN models is stiff, but they're pretty evenly matched against the Range Rover Sport, which is one of the model's key rivals. However, while the Range Rover Sport comes comprehensively equipped, the Porsche approach is to tempt you with exotic-sounding performance and luxury options that can rapidly escalate your financial commitment. Buyers hoping for frugal diesel or ostensibly green hybrid models will have to wait for now, as only petrol variants are available at launch. We expect more options to follow in due course, but the most efficient of the current bunch is unsurprisingly the standard car which delivers claimed economy figures of 31.4 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and CO2 emissions of 209 grams kilometer. Move up to the KNS, and the figures suggest a minimal penalty with over 30 miles per gallon and 213 GKM CO2 claimed, but anyone who buys a Porsche of any kind with a view to utilizing its performance potential is going to struggle to meet the official numbers. That's especially the case for the KN Turbo, which has a combined cycle test figure of 24 miles per gallon. This would be easy to half, if driven with gusto. The 272 grams kilometer CO2 figure ensures the turbo joins the rest of the lineup in the top 37% benefit in kind bracket for company car drivers, but it's a significantly worse performer from an environmental perspective. Insurance groups Insurance groups for the latest KN should be close to those quoted for the outgoing version, although they've yet to be confirmed by the insurance industry. You can expect group ratings of around 44 for the standard petrol model, and a top group 50 rating for the KN Turbo, which won't surprise anyone. Depreciation demand for previous generations of the KN has been strong once they've reached the used market, and we expect the latest model to perform well too. That said, you can expect to lose a greater percentage of the purchase price on top turbo models at resale time. However, some options make the vehicle even more attractive as a used buy, so spec carefully. Interior, design and technology inside and out, the new KN has a contemporary feel that reflects its leading edge tech. The exterior design of the latest Porsche KN is certainly evolutionary, and some might even call it predictable. It's both longer and lower than its predecessor, but still the KN's five-door profile is unmistakable. However, the new bodywork seems to be draped more tautly over that new shared platform, and the car has a more contemporary feel with its lead headlamps and more sharply contoured roofline. While the front end retains a classic Porsche KN look with those 911 inspired headlamps, long swooping bonnet with power dome, an aggressive trio of large air intakes, the rear has been more comprehensively revamped. Changes there include a full-width light strip with lead taillights, and overall the KN has a more broad-shouldered and muscular feel, giving it a closer family resemblance to the Panamera. Best fast family cars turbo models are distinguished by their 21-inch alloy wheel design, quad exhausts and color-coded wheel arch extensions. Inside, the changes have been even more profound, and the new interior has clearly been inspired by that in the latest Panamera saloon, although it's definitely been configured around the driver.
there's a wide, low-profile dashboard with a big 12-inch touchscreen at its center, while the multi-function steering wheel sits in front of a classic Porsche instrument binnacle. The large central rev counter is still present, but a pair of high-resolution displays flanking it can be configured by the driver to display instruments, maps or other info. Sat-nav, stereo and infotainment The Porsche Advanced Cockpit is new to all KN variants and features a glass effect panel at the center of the console with touch-sensitive buttons for fast access to major vehicle functions. The Porsche communication management system sits above with its high-definition 12-inch touchscreen, and with Porsche Connect you get Apple CarPlay connectivity and a range of around 20 apps for communications, entertainment, and information. The standard sound package plus is a 10-speaker audio system with 150 watts of power, but you can upgrade to either the 710 watt Bose surround sound system, or for real audio files a Burmester high-end 3D surround sound system with 21 speakers. Practicality, comfort and boot space superior refinement, plenty of toys and lots of luggage space make the KN a great traveling companion you sit relatively low in the Porsche KN, in cosseting sport style seats which provide plenty of comfort for long journeys, while offering good support, if you're cornering hard. Turbo models feature 18-way electronic adjustment, and with a wide range of steering wheel adjustment the cabin will be able to accommodate most people comfortably. Yet in spite of its super handling capabilities, the latest KN works remarkably well as a refined and relaxed cruiser, with only muted road roar from those big tires, and little in the way of wind noise to upset the calm. The air suspension offers a ride that's smooth and refined too, and with the premium materials and build quality of the cabin providing a suitably upmarket experience, driver and passengers should be happy for hours at a stretch. Size the KN is a big car, that takes up a lot of room on the road. At 4,918 millimeters long, 1,696 millimeters high, and 1,983 millimeters wide, it has a similar footprint to the Range Rover Sport. The British rival is a few mms taller than the KN, and a little shorter nose to tail, but there's not much in it, and the Porsche is about average size for this class. Legroom, headroom and passenger space in spite of a relatively lowered roofline, the sporty, low driving position, for an SUV at least, ensures all but the tallest occupants have plenty of space above their heads. Legroom is good in both front and rear seats, but the high transmission tunnel means front seat occupants don't get quite the same sense of airy spaciousness at their elbows that more upright SUVs provide. The rear seats are comfortable, and the bench slides forward and back so you can trade off legroom against extra luggage space. There's no seven-seat option, though. Boot the Porsche Cayenne's boot space is rated at an impressive 745 liters, minimum, for the least spacious turbo model, while the standard version can accommodate up to 1,710 liters with the rear seats folded down. The rear bench splits 40-20-40, and slides 16 millimeters fore and aft to maximize luggage space. Reliability and safety New safety technology delivers a great Euro NCAP result, and the reliability reputation is strong, too as you'd expect from a company with the engineering reputation of Porsche, the latest KN has a hewn from solid feel, and is undoubtedly screwed together well. Sharing the Audi Q7 platform means it benefits from the full weight of VW Group safety tech as well, so features such as autonomous braking, lane keeping assistance, cross traffic alert and active cruise control are all available as part of the package. Euro NCAP has tested the latest KN, and it performed very well with the full 5 star rating, along with a strong 95% rating for adult occupant safety. There was no date from previous generation KN owners in our 2017 driver power survey, as insufficient numbers participated. However, the Porsche brand is a hold, and the KN itself have a strong reputation for reliability and build quality. Warranty The Porsche model range is covered with a three-year, unlimited my mileage warranty, and European breakdown cover is included too. Porsche approved warranty extensions can be bought as well, but if you have to pay for an inspection, 
if you want to extend outside your first year of ownership, servicing the Porsche Cayenne has a servicing regime that includes an annual oil service, with minor services at two years, or 20,000 miles and a more significant visit to your dealer at four years or 40,000 miles. The costs reflect the premium nature of the Porsche brand, with a minor service costing around £450, and a major service coming in at £600 or so. Maintenance costs in general, will be on the high side too, especially if you drive hard, and use up consumables such as brake pads and tires earlier than you might have expected. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like video and subscribe my channel. Goodbye and see you soon.